I was looking into Kikyo when I was making my video talking about the spirits that we see in the tree in episode 4's preview, and I found some really interesting history behind her character. So today we will be talking about the inspiration behind one of the most divisive characters in the series. And if this video does really well, I will try to make a full character analysis on Kikyo on my next day off. With that being said, I'm sure you don't want to miss that, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like so I know you want to see it. And of course you can also support this channel on Patreon, which I will link in the description. With that being said, as this video is about Kikyo, I thought it would be fun to invite one of my VTuber friends on. You know, because her name is Kikyo. Thank you, Axel, for inviting me here. Hello everyone, I'm Kikyo Futaba, a VTuber. Or if you don't know what that is, basically a virtual streamer or content creator. My VTuber design was inspired by the priestess herself, Kikyo from Inuyasha. Since my childhood, Inuyasha was one of the first anime series that I fell in love with. Why was I inspired by Kikyo's character and design? Well, Kikyo is beautiful, smart, and she had her duty of protecting the Shikon Jewel. Unfortunately, fate leads her to a tragic ending. Either way, there is more to Kikyo than what's on the surface. And knowing the Inuyasha series, there is plenty of inspiration from Japanese folklore that we, as the audience, may or may not know about, as it may give us more meaning and context behind the characters that we love so much. So let's talk about Kikyo real quick. She was a priestess who was charged with the protection of the Shikon Jewel. This caused demons to constantly flock to her and try and steal the jewel, one of which was a half-demon named Inuyasha, who wanted to use it to become a full demon. However, the two ended up falling in love and Kikyo would convince him to instead use the jewel to become a human, in hopes that the jewel would be destroyed by this pure-hearted wish and that they could be together. At the same time, a man named Onigumo was burned to the point of not being able to move. Kikyo cared for him and helped him recover during this time, and he fell in love with Kikyo as well, eventually offering his body to a swarm of demons so that they could make a body that would have a chance with her. The demons fused with Onigumo to create Naraku, but soon after they would overwhelm the man's will and they would attack Kikyo while disguised as Inuyasha, stealing the jewel away from her in the process. This eventually led to her dying with the belief that Inuyasha had betrayed her, and that was the end of Kikyo's story for 50 years, until she would be revived by the witch Urasue. But with her backstory out of the way, let's look at some mythology. When it comes to Japanese folklore and spirits wandering souls, we can definitely look at the yurei. Put simply, these are ghosts of Japanese mythology and are typically considered to be barred from a peaceful afterlife. In traditional Japanese beliefs, all humans have a spirit called Reikon, and when that person dies, the Reikon leaves their body and enters purgatory, where it waits for a funeral so it can move on and join their ancestors and protect their living relatives. However, that changes if there are powerful feelings of jealousy, hatred, sorrow, love, or a need for revenge, or if a person dies in an overly tragic way, or if the funeral rites are not performed. In these cases, the Reikon transforms into a yurei. This can be shown in many ways, but there are two primary forms a yurei can happen. Firstly, the spirit can return as a wraith that will wander the world. Or second, they will come back through a reincarnation to complete the task which were left unfinished. And if the correlation to yurei wasn't clear enough, we can also talk about how they are described physically, almost always being seen with white clothes, long black hair, and hitodama, or spirits, which are often depicted as accompanying them. Well, hey, those both sound familiar. When it comes to Hidodama, these tend to be flames or will-o'-wisps, but I think her soul collectors are close enough to parallel them. On top of that, we literally see Kikyo return and pick up a mission to get revenge on Naraku, but we also see her reincarnation Kagome coming back and falling in love with and marrying Inuyasha like Kikyo wished that she would have been able to do. Exactly. And in each case, the yurei will exist on Earth until they are laid to rest through either performing the funeral rites they never received or resolving the emotional conflict which bound them to the world of the living. Which is probably why when Kikyo is mortally wounded by Naraku, she doesn't actually fade away until she kisses Inuyasha and acts on the love that she felt she lost when she died. Well, there you go. A look at the inspiration behind Kikyo's character. Lost spirits who wander the world long after they die, or are reincarnated to resolve unfinished business in the world of the living. I want to give a big thank you to Kikyo for joining me on this video. Like I said, she's a VTuber and you can watch her over on twitch.tv slash Kikyo. 
with a zero instead of the O. I'll link both her Twitch and her Twitter in the description down below, as well as in the pinned comments, so be sure to go check her out. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe for more daily Inuyasha and Yashihime content. You can also support the channel on Patreon just like our Dai Yokai Miasma, our Yokai Lucifina Akuma, and our Hanyo Jupiter Girl 125, Jasmine Morales, Michael Greco, and Nega Kitty. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and until next time, remember to stay excellent. Thank you.